gonna be a rough day. It's a little chilly this morning. There's an old trapper's cabin here. The snow is getting a little crazy. This is why I'm really concerned. The thought of Aaron calling in search and rescue in a few days is completely afraid to be out. I don't really care what I have to do. I'll swim with the canoe if I don't have to clear anymore. Yeah! I'm here on a forestry road with Aaron Outfitters. Just want to give a big shout out to them for dropping me off. Put their contact info in the description. Please don't. All set to go here at the access point. As always, don't forget to kiss your guide. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Have a great week. You too. Bye. We were shocked to find this trail here to uh, pass this set of rapids. It's a good start for the trips, more than I expected. Good start. What do we got? Oh, beautiful brookie. Out of season. I'll get it back real quick. Wet my hands first before I handle it out of the net. Walk out. Quickly show it to the camera. And goodbye. Thanks, buddy. Sweet. Little flasher jig with a small pat soft plastic paddle tail. Catches everything. Another bite. Pretty good bite in it. Another brookie. Wow. Dang. I wish I was here during uh, open season on brook trout. Gorgeous. Thanks, buddy. All I'm seeing here is follows from brookies, so I'm going to move off. Beautiful spot though, lots to see on this trip though, so, and potentially lots of work. A lot of unknowns, I believe this route is seldom traveled. The last documented account of it that I can find is from 1994 with the Geraldton High School Outers Club. In no time at all, I arrived at the first log jam. Um, I think there are at least two that I could see on satellite. Hopefully that's all and that's manageable. These things can just be the bane of river travel. I'm going to find a way around this now. Either clear a port or try and cut through here, but it's a bit deep to be wading and cutting the logs. Scrambled up the south bank first. It looks a little more appealing. But it's pretty rough. That little log jam, about 20 meters long, took almost two hours to clear and portage and scout. That's why I've allotted five to six days for this trip. 77 kilometers long, but obstacles like that really stretch the distance. Clear the trail around log jam number two. Hopefully smooth and clear sailing for a little bit after this. lift over this one which I'm probably gonna end up in the water for really slippery <clears throat>
that log jam is just around the corner and I should have started the portage there. I could hear rapids and I should have known that based on the volume of them, they weren't gonna be runnable. It's a crazy little shoot in there. I was hoping I could run them, but there's no chance. Beautiful spot. No semblance of a trail and real thick bush in here. So it's gonna be another long clear. Looking at this on the satellite imagery, I thought this was just a rapid. Blasted a trail through here, took forever. And now I'm at a point where as soon as I get through here, I gotta make camp quickly. Sun's going down. Oh boy. Oh. The site's gonna take more clearing than I'd like to spend the time on, but I know better than to be overly picky when it's getting dark. in the spot. I was really hungry. It was a hard day. I thought this was going to be my easy day. Packing up here at first light. It's a little chilly this morning. I'm not going to be putting these socks on yet. <laughs> With the difficulty of travel yesterday, I only made about six and a half kilometers over about eight hours of travel. It was very slow, most of it spent clearing. I started the route here. I know a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people like uh, following along on a map, so I'm just gonna show you where I am. If you check on satellite, you'll see a bridge here over the Little Pick River. There's a log jam that I marked in scouting this on satellite. I made this map. So I carried on down. These are the falls that I saw yesterday, which I had marked as rapids. And there is another set here, um, which based on the fact that I can hear them from several kilometers away, I'm guessing are also going to be falls. Once I get past here, I'll show you now the older map, which is from 1994, the last documented uh, account of this route. Kalala Creek comes in and meets up with uh, Little Pick River. And then there are some rapids along it, which I have some information on from this map. So that's the goal today, is to, uh, to get past Kalala Creek to the first waterfall on that map, which will probably be the third waterfall on my trip. Definitely not runnable, I can hear that. There's a beautiful little spot here, right before the falls. But uh, clearing around it is going to be a challenge. There's another stream flowing in here. Might have to go to the other side of the river. It's gonna take a while. I'm hoping if I get around this, maybe I can line down that stuff. I've scouted a ways ahead now and it's more unrunnable rapid coming into this little canyon. And then around that, I can't see beyond it. So I'm gonna continue scouting ahead, but it's not looking good. Very difficult to clear a trail through all this too. I'm actually starting to get pretty concerned here. Uh, I badly wish Aaron was here. This is too much clearing for one person. And I told Aaron I should be back on the fifth night for dinner. And now I'm thinking, um, I said maybe, maybe six nights. But now I'm wondering if that's even realistic. This is just the start. Like I've, I haven't even put finished 
15% of the route yet. I know I can do this, but I just don't want to put Aaron in a panic when I don't get home Thursday evening. There are some open stretches like this, but then they just turn into walls. Trail's clear, and now I just gotta get through there. It's a relief to have the trail established. took four hours. Hopefully there's some kind of reward here. Not a bite. I had one uh, follow from a small brookie and that was it. That's shocking, but just as well because I got to get going. Been making good progress since the falls, which feels really good. Um, there's a good supply of dry wood here for a fire for lunch, which has been rare along the river. It's been all bushy stuff and there's some fresh moose tracks here the moose tracks all along the river but these ones look pretty fresh I'm making a batch of high calorie mac and cheese so needed mm. <laughs> I just passed the mouth of Kalala Creek back there. And now I actually have a map with information. So I have those 25 year old uh, reports from 1994, which tell me something about the rapids and falls and portages, which are almost undoubtedly virtually gone at this point, but at least I'll know where to start. Paddling hard, making good progress. And uh, can't set up too late today because a massive storm is moving in. It's supposed to get 30 millimeters of rain in pretty short order, so don't want to get caught in that. Approaching the first of three rapids on the 1994 map, which suggested that it might be runnable. I really hope so. A big sweeper going across it, so I'm going to have to take a walk and check it out. I had all kinds of harebrained schemes here, but finally decided I have to line it. It's a hell of a lot better than blasting out of trail. And 
the bite. Something on. I'm feeling it's a speck. Yep. Quick look. Nice little rookie. Still nothing that I can eat. I was really hoping there'd be walleye and pike in here. Had a couple specks on. Follow those from specks. I don't think there's anything else here, so I'm gonna move on. Would love this if they were in season. This rapid would be runnable in high water, but there's a dangerous sweeper here. I'm just gonna get rid of it so that this rapid could be run if water levels were high enough. Another log jam, but cleared a little path here, and I think I can squeeze over these guys if I step out onto the logs. It's too deep to get in the water. Yes. Fantastic. Just finished getting camp set up back in there, and uh, started to spit about a half hour ago, so I just called it quits. It's getting dark anyway. Going to have some food. Got the canoe well up off on the side with all the rain that's expected to come and tied down. Can't imagine it'll crawl up that much, but it's definitely gonna go up overnight. Another pretty tough day, but survived it and uh, a little closer to the goal. On the old maps, this I'm roughly there. There's Rapid 7, Falls, long portage along here potentially. Uh, another Rapid with a portage, Falls, and another Falls. And then the maps continue all along here and down to the Trans Canada Highway where I'll be connecting with my car. And then there's a write-up on it too, describing campsites, rapids, and portages. But after 25 years, uh, they don't hold a lot of relevance. It's about 9 a.m. and I'm kind of trapped here. If I go out, I need to remove some of these clothes to keep them dry, um, and then I'll be shivering. The only thing that is gonna be able to keep me warm today is a uh, clearing trail around the next waterfall, which isn't too far ahead. So I'm hoping to at least accomplish that today. I'm just waiting for the air temperature to rise a little bit so I don't get absolutely chilled. It's 10.45 now and I, I really have to get going, so uh, I'm eating a few Kaiser rolls stuffed with peanut butter and then I'm going to go get wet. It's going to be a rough day. I try to be very conscious of bear attractants out here. Uh, and uh, Bears are often attracted to strange things you wouldn't expect like uh, toothpaste or gasoline, um, things that don't, don't aren't food, but they have a strong odor. Deodorant can fall in that category too, so I use a natural, unscented deodorant. Anything I can remove or substitute from my pack that has a really strong odor, uh, I generally try and do that. The natural one feels weird at first. It's like, um, it feels like sandpaper when you try and apply it. And I only discovered after reading the instructions that you have to hold it against your skin in order to let it warm and become soft. <laughs> kind of like cold butter, uh, that I realized it wasn't so bad. I got my wet pants back on, but the worst part is the cold wet socks.
This first falls is actually not long at all. Just a little shoot, but I'm guessing it continues around that corner based on the old map. Yep. And presumably they carry on down there too. Have I mentioned this is gonna be rough? Just keeps on going and going. And I'm still scouting. I haven't even started to cut yet. Wow. It's breathtaking along here, but it goes on for so long. This is freaking me out. The thought of Aaron calling in search and rescue in a few days is completely freaking me out. Can't let that happen. The rocks are really slippery. with the canoe if I don't have to clear anymore. It's gonna make it work. I'm gonna put on the underwater GoPro now to uh, in case I dump. there's some kind of reward here that was one of the worst I've done one of the worst portages and I've had some nasty ones I feel like a fool for taking this on on my own it's too much I feel like I should file a human rights claim against myself this is just brutal I'm soaked and chilled and I better get a fire going tonight something on here but it's tiny oh just lost it 
a little speck. It's fine. Oh man, a lot of emotions there. I'm I'm spent. Uh, some real highs in getting past that, but some real lows. I'm really stressed about time. I'm a time stressor. I hate being late and I can't stop thinking about search and rescue coming for me. I was able to travel for about three minutes before hitting another unrunnable chute. The camera chose a terrible moment to freeze up here. My canoe turned while I was trying to line it over the ledge, and it got sucked into the recirculating water below. I was already stressed and at my limit for the day, and I really felt panic there as I watched it happen. I could hear rushing water around the blind corner, and I had no idea if it was a violent rapid or even a waterfall. I pictured my canoe getting pinned and destroyed there in the middle of nowhere. Mercifully, the river let me yank the canoe out with my line before it flipped in the hole. I was pretty shaken up, but I had no choice but to carry on. More unrunnable rapids. Got my heart racing across the uh, river here. I heard some branches cracking and I wasn't sure what it was, but I just heard a, a moose grunting at me. Still can't see him. There are moose tracks on my little beach here. Honestly, just hope he leaves me alone. Here's where things finish today. Purple dot, start point. Blue dot, me. This river. That to the Trans Canada Highway is what I have left. I've done at most a third of the route and I've used three out of ideally five, maximum six days. This is why I'm really concerned. Last night was pretty awful. I was feeling as beaten down as I've ever felt after three days of a trip. But uh, it's not raining today. I'm feeling optimistic that today's gonna be a better day. Make good progress. According to the map and the information I have, there shouldn't be as many obstacles today. So if that holds true, then I'll be okay. Forecast for today was kind of variable, but I'm loving what I'm seeing. My mood is really up from yesterday.
clay here is ridiculous. My boots weigh like 10 pounds. On the portage around the next falls and there's an old trapper's cabin here <laughs> still some cut wood back there seen better days I believe on the 25 year old map that it said this cabin was in use at the time. It doesn't take long for nature to reclaim it. Moose skull, spine, jaw, more bones. This is by far the best portage yet. A decent stretch of it is just like this cleared it a bit, but not too much. Last port of the day coming up. Just gonna get past this waterfall and then call it quits. This is by far the best trail yet. It's the only real trail. Everything else is required clearing. But my fears of Aaron calling in search and rescue are rapidly disappearing. Deshaun. It doesn't feel big. If it was a salmon, I'm pretty sure it would feel big. Oh, and I lost it. Splendid. So the waterfall is just around the corner and I'm gonna fish it again tomorrow morning. But running out of daylight today, decided to uh, set up camp, not in the dark for once. And just getting in a few casts here before before I get to bed. Oh, oh, oh! I think I just had a bite. It felt big. Uh, but this is more like it, I was just about to say. I'm not time stressed. I don't think. I think I'm okay for time to get to where I need to be. Uh, I'm fishing. I'm excited to be fishing. And I'm relaxed. Cheers to getting this trip back on the right track. Another good bear practice is to fart up your sleeping area profusely. Um, I believe it was Thoreau who discovered that in his time alone in the wilderness. Speaking of which, I'm reading a, a really good book right now called Stranger in the Woods. I'm going to continue reading it as I doze off here. It's about a hermit. Ah. Spirits are high. And spirits are delicious. Good morning. It's a chilly one. It's uh, probably close to zero again tonight. It's got some crackers and cheese this morning. Cheese is very important to me. Um, and I wasn't really sure how to express how I felt, so I made this. Actually, it pretty much happened by accident. I just shaped it up a little. 
best part of the day. Camp is packed up. It becomes quite a tedious chore to do that over and over and over again throughout the season. Uh, but it's done. It's time for fishing and a full day of adventure. A couple of moose here. Of course, I just started to troll. There they go. Good. Staring. Looks like a cow and calf. See you guys. <laughs> I was not ready for that. <laughs> I was just kind of looking back, gazing around, and then boom! <laughs> Two moose gawking at me. Just glad it wasn't a bull. Bulls are what concern me right now at this time of year in the rut. Awesome. This day for hot chocolate. Can't get the chill off. The wind is just uh, is bitterly cold today. One of those days where you're wearing your life jacket just to bottle in a little more heat. But this is helping and lunch will, will help too. Oh man, heart is pumping. I was just thinking about a bull moose encounter and I just heard something crash through there like a bulldozer. Whew, okay. Scared the crap out of me. Hey! Back off! Holy cow! like a zoo here. Hey! Yeah, that's it. Scram. Did not like the way he was sitting there waiting for me to approach. Oh, my heart's been racing three times today now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bear. I didn't mean to yell. You're just huge and clawed. You got big, beautiful teeth. The river paddling gets kind of monotonous and you just kind of zone out and then you turn and boom, the animal's looking right at you. Hi. So weird. The beavers have been like oblivious to me. Or maybe there was a muskrat. I didn't see a big tail. I was looking through the camera. I'm not sure now. Um, in any case, I've uh, startled a few of them coming along the shoreline here. I guess it's a solo paddler just keeping quiet and going downstream. Doesn't make a lot of noise, so that was cool. The zoo day continues. Starting what's going to be a very long portage around a bunch of rapids. Might not finish today. And I'm walking through these tall grasses and shrubs. It always creeps me out. I'm always wondering if a bear is around. There are plenty of game trails through it. Um, I actually found a few good raspberries on one bush, so there might still be some forage here. I'm keeping the bear spray in hand right now. Uh, and uh, just trying to find a way through. I was gonna bush crash it, uh, but I've hit a wall of alder. So I don't know, I might have to clear.
What a beautiful spot. I uh, just washed up. I'm gonna head up there in the woods to get away from this infernal racket. I'm gonna read for a bit. Uh, there's nothing more I can do today. Still have quite a bit of work left to do tomorrow, um, but it's too late to start anything right now. So I'm just gonna have some cheese, read a book, eat, some, drink some scotch. Here's the recap for today. I uh, went from that red dot there all the way to my current location. But that is the amount of distance you can cover when you're not hampered by non-stop obstacles. I covered way more today than I covered in the first three days, as you can see. As I've been recording this trip, I feel like someone could say that I've been complaining about my situation a lot. And uh, maybe that's true, but I'll also say that this is the hardest trip I've done this season. And that includes my May trip with Aaron, which was exceedingly difficult. This one is more difficult. Um, equal difficulty physically, similar difficulty mentally with the number of unknowns and being on a tight timeline on both trips. But emotionally, this one has been much harder. Erin hasn't been here. I've been thinking about her nonstop and worrying about her worrying about me. And the thing about YouTube is that uh, the video gets put out there, people watch it, they think they saw the whole experience. Um, well, what's shown on YouTube is maybe four or 5% of the entire duration of a trip. Um, a lot else goes on. There are lots of other physical difficulties, mental difficulties, such as this is the third night I've slept beside rushing water where I can't hear if like an animal is approaching, I can't really hear that. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, but I've had no alternative on this trip. A bear could walk up here right now and it would be pretty hard for me to tell until the last second. I guess what I'm trying to say is that this once soloist has gone soft. On a related note, this book about a hermit, The Stranger in the Woods, has been fantastic by Michael Finkel. There's a great quote here, it says, One's desire to be alone, by that biologists have found, is partially genetic and to some degree measurable. If you have low levels of the pituitary peptide oxytocin, sometimes called the master chemical of sociability and high quantities of the hormone vasopressin, which may suppress your need for affection, you tend to require fewer interpersonal relationships. Despite the challenge of this trip, this, uh, this quote by the hermit, Christopher Knight, is really good. Nature, Knight clarified, is brutal. The weak do not survive and neither do the strong. Life is a constant, merciless fight that everyone loses. Compared to every other creature out here, I have it so easy. That's the funny thing. Got sleet this morning, halfway between rain and snow, and I'm gonna scout the first portage, see if I can run it. If not, back to clear, uh, clearing trail. A little mink just trotted down here for his morning routine. Got to there, looked at me, he's like, huh? <laughs> and darted back. <laughs> uh, the first rapid is runnable, so that is wonderful news. Now it's actually snowing, which is nice. This is beautiful. First snow of the season. Here we go. Oh crap. I got pushed right into that. Nothing I could do. Rough start, rough start. Running rapids in the snow. 
I'm talking about Canada, baby. Almost lost it right off the bat. Oh boy. Maybe if I had been kneeling that would help. But my crotch should be right in front of the camera if I'm kneeling. Guess I should prioritize running the rapid. Anyway, I'm gonna... You know what? I'm not even gonna fish this. I don't feel like it. If there are salmon here, I'll let them be. Looks like some tamer stuff ahead. There's a big rapid coming up. It's the last big challenge that this river is going to throw me. All right, here the rapids ahead. It's time for a scout. The snow is getting a little crazy. scouted a ways ahead and it will be a super long portage and clearing job so uh, I'm gonna run it it looks manageable for quite a while might be some bumps and scrapes who am I kidding it's probably gonna be mostly bumps and scrapes wish me luck
actually a pretty clean run. It was pretty straightforward, but the rapid isn't done yet. Getting pretty cold here. it was marked that this area had a class two to three rapid I was expecting more around the corner maybe I'm out of the woods you know what I can't stop thinking right now I don't have my winter tires on yet <laughs> side I can take. You really can't tell if there's a rock there, but it might be okay. can be quite a roller coaster, quite a surprise. Oh, today's going great. What a relief. Soon I can be home, check in with Erin. At dinner tonight, she'd be in panic mode. Can't wait. You know those places you drive by on the highway, on the way to work or your cottage, wherever, and you look onto that lake or down a down a road or something, and you think, I wonder what's down there. I've been looking down up the Little Pick River, across the Trans Canada Highway Bridge, so many times. Now I can finally check that off my wanderlust list in spectacular fashion. <laughs> wow. Been waiting a long time to see these views and they've lived up to expectations and I think the snow is adding to it. <laughs> I kind of, I was hoping to get here yesterday and when it turned nice and blue, but I think this is just as special. Soaking this up a little bit. This is the reward that I worked for. I can see the bridge. Oh, I just got a glimpse of it through the hills. What a relief. <laughs> this trip made me feel like an amateur. I've done this hundreds of days and this was one of the most difficult. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> These hard trips, you, uh, you're kind of happy when they're over but you look back on them the most fondly. Well, 
I'm just about there. Um, thank you for joining me on this one. I needed the companionship. Um, believe it or not, the camera and the thought of sharing it provides that somehow. Takeout is right up there, up this slope. There's the bridge I've been driving over. And I'm signing off after an amazing trip. Two years have passed since the trip you just saw. I originally posted it in 2019 as a two-part series. Got lots of questions, so I'm gonna go over some of the most common themes, rapid fire Q&A style. Question one, this one was kind of funny and it was so repetitive. I couldn't believe the outrage about this issue. It was, why bring deodorant on a solo trip? Why not just get stinky? I don't really know what to say to that. I guess it's a personal choice. I don't even use it every day out here, more like every three days at the most. It's just like a little blast of freshness when you feel disgusting after uh, some rugged travel. That's it. Number two, why not get a kayak or inflatable or a lighter canoe? Well, that would make some aspects of the trip easier, um, but first of all, I don't own those. I owned the canoe that I had. Boats tend to be in the thousands of dollars, at least hundreds, and you can't own the perfect boat for every occasion. Not to mention there's cargo capacity. I've got big packs, a 60 liter food barrel, 115 liter pack, main pack, fishing rods, filming gear. I, uh, it would just be really impractical to have almost anything but a canoe for this trip in, the, in that sense. And for inflatables specifically, I don't want to be thinking about accidentally puncturing it, uh, either on, on rocks and rapids or smashing through the bush. I'd way rather have this hard canoe than be worried about puncturing it and I certainly wouldn't want to be deflating and inflating constantly every time I had to portage. The canoe has been the vessel of choice for trips in this region for a long time and that's for a good reason. Next question, what kind of canoe did you have? It was a 15 foot prospector and expedition Kevlar, so Kevlar boats are tend to be the ultralights. This was expedition Kevlar, it's a tougher layup and it can take a little bit of a beating. Um, it was from a small shop in Hamilton, Ontario called Beach Marine. Uh, it has a weight of about 55 pounds. I've since sold it. Uh, I haven't really announced this yet, but my first canoe, I sold it to a couple of good guys. Well, really one, uh, Ari in Marathon. And I think his brother Mateo will get some use out of it too. And I'm thrilled that they have it. Uh, I'm thrilled to give that special canoe, which means a lot to me to someone who's gonna use it for many years. Have you ever heard about LNT, Leave No Trace? Yeah, um, it's a great philosophy, and I'm sure someone who, who lives where LNT is necessary is looking at me thinking, you are a bulldozer, like you're ruining this place. That's not the case up here. There's very limited funding for canoe routes. The Little Pick River, believe it or not, that's a, a recognized canoe route by the province. Many, there are many of them, so there just isn't the funding to maintain them. So doing that trail maintenance, establishing campsites and, and fire pits, that's, you're, you're helping. That's not a hindrance up here. It's just a different environment. It's very wild, very bu thick bush in Northern Ontario. Why not carry a SATCOM device? Similar to the canoe connect question, I didn't own one. I do now, I've got the Zolio. I've got it right behind me here, two years later. I got a PLB, which was originally, which is just a, um, a device with an SOS button. You know, if, if something is horribly wrong, you have a, a link to the outside world. Now I have this Zolio, and yeah, if you if you were looking at that trip thinking, why didn't you have something like this? Believe me, I wish that I had. The SOS function on the PLB was great, but sometimes you just need to say I'm running late. Like that increased the amount of stress on this trip tenfold. Just the ability, not the not having the ability to say. I'm, I just need another day or two, everything's fine. 
it wasn't like I couldn't do this trip. It was really just the time stress that, that was the most um, affecting me the most. Sometimes you don't kneel when running rapids. Why? Well, I prefer not to kneel um, unless I need to, just for comfort. I know, I know the merits of kneeling, especially in rapids. Uh, better stability and control, maneuverability. Uh, but I only do it when I have to. I'm doing these trips for comfort and enjoyment, despite how rough this trip was. I do do this for enjoyment. And uh, I'm not training for the Olympics. I'm not running a paddling instructor's course. I'm just enjoying myself out here. So I don't always, in fact, I almost never demonstrate good, good form. <laughs> what camping gear do you bring? Also, what filming gear? There's way too much to say about that, uh, but I just did a full rundown of my kit this spring, so I'm sure you have no trouble finding those videos if you're if you're looking for more on that. I broke it up into parts, my main pack, my filming kit, my food, so uh, you can check those out separately if you're interested. Where was this? A lot of people asked that. Uh, it was in the beginning, but it's so easy to miss those little captions. It was the Little Pick River, north shore of Lake Superior in northern Ontario, Canada. Why didn't you eat any of the fish? I get this a lot. This this time, um, there was a, a black and white answer. I only caught brook trout, and brook trout were out of season, so meaning it's illegal to keep them. Other times, I don't I don't always keep the fish that I catch because a maybe they're too small, not worth keeping. They're too big. They're a good spawner. It's not a nice time. I just ate. I'm in a rush. And probably the one thing that people never consider when they ask this question, filming is a massive amount of work. Even to film uh, a catch and cook, it, it elongates that process so much. And sometimes you just don't feel like it. You'd just rather pull something out of the barrel and eat that. Not to mention, if I eat things out of my barrel, it's lightening that barrel for, for upcoming uh, portages. So if I just ate fish all trip, my barrel will be heavy for the whole trip. I'll leave it at that because I wanted to make this quick, but yeah, looking back on this trip two years later, it's still one of the hardest that I've ever done, really because of the time stress. It was difficult in terms of conditions, it was cold, it was wet, the, rough, the travel was rough, thick bush, and limited information, unknown rapids, or very little information on the rapids, and that's tough, but yeah, just not thinking of Erin calling in search and rescue, and her worrying, and having to get back to work, uh, those things were really stressful. So if I had a day or two more on this trip, it would have been totally different. But those challenges, um, like I said, in the moment on this trip, they make for the most rewarding trips, and that was the case for this one.